Monster Squad right there. And uh, I just texted Jason and told him to call in. So uh, let's give him a quick second. Oh, here he is now. So here's Jason Three, from The Havoc. Two. How you doing, Jason? This is Andrew on Pogo City Radio. Hey, Andrew. I'm doing great. How are you today, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. No problem, man. Happy to be a part of the show. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm real happy that uh, you guys messaged me and said that the new single's finally ready. Been a while, huh? 16 years? Yeah, man. It's uh, crazy how time flies. It doesn't necessarily feel like it's been that long, but it definitely has been. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I have two kids now, and I'm in my 30s, and I was in high school when I started listening to you guys. So it definitely, time has definitely flown, I feel like. It's kind of like a time warp. So uh, what's been going on? I uh, I did hear that, uh, what, what was up with Spades and Blades? Were you a uh, part of that while that was going on? Uh, yes, and actually that is still going on. Um, that band was formed by myself. And the two other founding members of the Havoc, Justin and Josiah, uh, Justin and I still play in that project together. Josiah left that project, I think it was about five years ago or so at this point. Um, and whenever we decided to uh, start getting the Havoc going again, uh, he uh, wanted to be a part of the, the fold. So we said, all right, and uh, just started working on stuff from there yeah that's great that's great so you guys uh wrapped it up what in 2006 initially you guys had your last show what in southgate california that's correct Awesome, awesome. So uh, let's go back to the beginning, though. I first came across you guys before your album came out on Punk Core Records, but see, like I said, I was in high school in 2003, so I was at punkcore.com like every single day. So as soon as they announced that a new album was going to come out, I ran and bought your first 7-inch real quick. I don't remember what it was called. It was a picture of you guys and the razor blade on the top? Yeah, that 7-inch was called Who's Gonna Die? That's it, yeah, and it had a picture of Uncle Scam in the fold-out jacket with the Exxon pin and everything. I remember that a lot. I remember liking that. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so how did you guys... Now, you guys released that on your own, correct? We sure did. And how did you, how did you guys put that together? So, when we started the band, we really had uh, a very ambitious drive and the first thing that we wanted to do was uh record some songs put out a seven inch and get on the road with it um and so we had a buddy that had a recording studio that justin knew through one of his uh his previous bands i think and uh so we reached out to him about recording and um man i i don't even remember exactly how long we were together before we tracked that first seven inch, but I don't think we were a band even six months yet. Um, so it, it kind of went really fast uh, from the, the point that we formed the band to recording that seven inch and then releasing it, um, which we, uh, we had that pressed um, through Pirates Press, um, not on their label, just through their pressing plant. Um, and then Shortly after that, I mean, we had summer dates already booked, and we went out on this crazy summer tour that I think was like six weeks or seven weeks or something, and we literally broke down every single day, <laughs> like from on the beginning of that tour, like every state from California to Florida, we broke down. It was insane. Well, it wouldn't be a um, punk rock tour any other way. The van always has to break or it's it's not a tour in punk rock, you know? Exactly. But you know what? Um, it was all worth it because doing all of that stuff on our own, it definitely spoke to Dave over at Punk Core. Um, and, you know, he was looking for bands that were hungry and we were definitely one of those bands. So yeah. it worked out in our favor. Yeah, totally, totally. So what he just found, like basically your seven inch came across you guys and said, hey, let's let's put out an LP. Like what happened exactly? So after we put out that first 7-inch, we came, uh, uh, we ran into Mike Virus at some show, 
uh, this is all kind of fuzzy because it was so long ago, but I don't remember what show we ran into him at, but I, I think we gave him a copy of the seven inch at that show. And when we, uh, <laughs> when we did that, we also put in uh burn CDs in the seven inch. So that way you could listen to it in your car or whatever. And, um, he ended up calling us like that same night and said, Hey, I'm putting together a show in San Diego with my new band, cheap sex and the virus is going to be coming through on tour. And I'd like you guys to play the show. So we said, yeah, that'd be great. Um, and at that show, we met some of the guys from the virus and gave them a copy of the seven inch and, they had said that they would take it back to uh, Jake of Charge yeah, because uh, their first record came out on Charge, and they said, you know, we'll, we'll give it to him and see what he thinks. You know, maybe you guys can release a record on Charge and then graduate to punk core. <laughs> yeah, I felt um, like a lot of that was like, it was like uh, Charge was like junior high and then punk core was high school. Exactly. I always felt like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was our same impression. And, and that's kind of what we were thinking might happen. And uh, then we were on tour months later. Uh, I, and if I am remembering this correctly, we're on a winter tour and we were actually at my parents' house um, on a stop there in Oklahoma. And I got this email from punk core records and they were saying, Hey, we, uh, we got your seven inch from the virus guys and we like what you guys are doing. You know, we're curious uh, about, uh, what else the band is up to and, um, would you mind reaching out to us? So I thought it was a joke at first. You were like, this like, isn't I, I real. Somebody, <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought somebody was punking us, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it turned out to be legit. So, uh, we ended up sending Punk Core a package, and it, it was like one of everything that we had from our merch table. And when they got it, um, you know, Dave, he just, his word to me, you know, whenever we got on a phone call, he was like, man, I love this because it's like a band in a box. Everything that you could want from a punk band was in that box. And <laughs> it was just kind of a, he said it was just kind of a no-brainer uh, for him to, to want to work with us. And, um, you know, a lot of that, we have to give credit to Justin because he and his brother have a, a screen printing shop, and they've been doing that ever since they were in high school. And so the Havoc, like, we had such a really strong emphasis on merchandise right from the get-go. So um, – being able to have all of that to send to punk core, yep. uh, that really, that credit for that just really goes to Justin. Yeah, I completely agree, man. I mean, I just recently, me and my friends just started another project during uh, the whole Corona thing. And that's me, man. I'm trying to roll everything out, get him moving, hit the ground running. You know what I mean? It's like, we just started, we've all known each other for a long time, but like we're playing together. Like we've been playing together for years. Everything sounds great. And I feel like it's easier than ever to really get your own stuff out there and i have just been waiting for the right group of guys who are ready to take off running and i think i got them now and uh speaking of taking off running are you guys up full scale running again now for good yeah so you're right man like in this day and age it is a lot easier uh to get things off the ground and going um which is awesome but i also feel like it's a double-edged sword Yep, yeah, it dilutes um, everything almost. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the internet, we have to thank for that. I mean, it's just insane with how things have developed um, over the last couple of decades. Um, you know, we are fully up and running, but we've had some obstacles in our way. Obviously, the whole uh, COVID pandemic has uh, really just, you know, through, it's just thrown everybody through a loop. Oh, yeah, um, no doubt. And we're no exception to that. Um, and then also, like, <laughs> it's kind of funny, uh, when I thought about starting this project up again, I had actually left California and moved back to Oklahoma um, because, I, 
you know, I've been in Los Angeles for 18 years, and I just was at a point where I was ready to kind of go back home and spend more time with my family. My parents are getting older, and um, so anyway, uh, when I left California, I, I really had no thought whatsoever about resuming the havoc. But um, when I got back to Oklahoma, I was just kind of, I don't know, exploring my roots. And um, it made me think a lot about my friendship with Justin. You know, he's my best friend. He has been uh, since the late 90s. And um, the really what kind of started this was I wanted to write a song um, about our friendship. And I felt like the Havoc, like, was just kind of the right vehicle to do that lyrically. It just made more sense to do it with that type of music. Um and so the the first song that I wrote for uh, this comeback was about um, he and I. And when I sent it to him, he was like, man, do you think we should start this back up? Should we put this out there? And I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, we could, uh, we could explore it and see what happens. And so that's what uh, that first teaser that we dropped uh, on New Year's Day uh, 2020, that was what that was about. We just kind of wanted to see – you know, what the reaction would be. And uh, it definitely surprised us. I mean, there was a lot of people that reacted to that, uh, just that little clip. And uh, we said, okay, well, that's a good sign. Maybe we really should uh, consider doing this. And, you know, it's just been one step at a time since then. But, yeah, we're, uh, we're firing on all cylinders, even though we don't all live in the same state anymore. Well, yeah, yeah. So why don't we uh, talk about the comp a little? So now uh, I, I seen I like what the biz? Did I see the business's logo on there? I was like, how is the business on there? Who's all on this comp? Yeah, the business is on there, um, which was kind of like one of the big selling points for us when we got contacted by that label. We saw some of the other bands that were going to be a part of it, um, and we thought, oh man, well this is great because there's some really uh iconic bands that are going to be on this but then there's also uh some of these like diehard street punk bands that are really good uh that have kind of been going at it for a while now and then there's you know uh, a lot of younger up-and-coming bands and bands you know from all over the world um and we thought man that that would just be really cool to be a part of that um but the business is definitely one of those bands that uh, kind of raised our eyebrows because we love that band. Um, you know, we have for a very long time. So we thought this would be really cool to be involved with. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, it's definitely a uh, nice little entrance to make after being gone for 16 years. So uh, what's on the horizon after the comp? Are you guys, uh, do you got anything lined up for a 7-inch or an LP or wait and see? So there's some stuff in the works, um, nothing that I can confirm just yet, but uh, I'll just say that we have been hard at work uh, to prepare for whatever is going to be the end result. Cool, cool, good, good. Glad you guys are still doing it and still enjoying it. So I told you uh, yesterday, I, I always like to ask people when they come on the show really about their roots in getting into the scene. So I always figured you were from California, but you've said quite a few times you're from Indiana. So why don't you take us way back to the beginning? How did you end up getting into punk in general? So, yeah, um, actually, I'm from Oklahoma, not Indiana, oh, uh, although I've got nothing against Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, man, my roots kind of started, like, with, you know, uh, most kids from uh, the mid to late 90s. Um, MTV was a huge thing at that time, um, and I have a sister that's 10 years older than I am, so... When I was a little kid, you know, I, I'm coming home, like, from preschool, and my sister's watching MTV. Yeah. And so, Beavis as and a Butthead. result, I was watching MTV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Beavis and Butthead, when that Headbangers came out, like, ball. Yeah, I watched it all the time, man. Yeah, Headbangers, yeah, headbangers ball, ball, all the good ball, stuff. All yeah, that, yeah, man. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, that that was kind of my introduction into a lot of bands. Um 
although I had been a fan of music in general, I mean, since I was a little, little kid, I mean, I, I, I grew up in a family that listened to all types of different music, but um, when I got to about the age of 12 uh, is when I started discovering some punk bands. Um, and, you know, at that time, a lot of bands that were at the forefront were like Rancid and Green Day, you know, because they had that heavy rotation on MTV and they were yeah, being like played the on the radio. The Wolves and, era and all that, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and that was definitely an album that caught my attention just from, you know, the cover of it. I thought, wow, <laughs> I this was is just really going to cool say looking... that. Took the words right out of it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they have music videos out. And I, I think the first one I saw for them was probably Ruby Soho. Um, of course. And I too. liked that song. I thought the, the band looked really cool and, and whatever. Um, uh, and, you know, just, there's just something about the energy of that music. And then, of course, the image. Uh, it's just rooted in rebellion and uh, being an outcast. And I just identified with that. Um, and then from there, you know, it, it's like everybody else that gets into this music, it's like you start with something that's kind of surface level, uh, and then you start digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And so my experience was no different. You know, um, once I started discovering bands like the exploited and, uh, the sex pistols and GBH and discharge and, uh, you know, started really getting into that stuff and then, you know, trying to dig deeper and coming across bands like Broken Bones and Skeptics and, you know, the list goes on and on. But um, I, I think it, it was one of those things where uh, I was always very open to uh, different styles of music, not just punk rock, but punk rock was kind of my home base. Uh, and as a, uh, a young musician, it gave me something tangible, uh, to, to learn. And that's what I started cutting my teeth on when I, I was learning to play guitar was, you know, all of these great punk rock songs. Um, and of course that, uh, led to the desire to start a band and, you know, it just, it all rolled from there. Absolutely, man. All right. So I really appreciate you calling. I'm really excited about the release. I hope uh, when you guys figure out what's up next, you give us another call. Let us know what's going on. Maybe come on again. And uh, also, uh, is there uh, any advice maybe you'd want to give to, before we get out of here and play a selective service? Is there any advice maybe you'd want to give to a, a young kid trying to start a band? Yeah. Um You've got to love what you're doing before you can give a shit about what anybody else thinks about it. Um, so if you're going to start a band, make sure that whatever you're doing, you, you feel really passionate about. Don't do it just because uh, you want other to, people to like it or you want to feel accepted by other people. Um, that's not what this movement is about. That's not what this music is about. Um, you got to, uh, identify with it, you know, on, on whatever level, um, and, and just tap into that and let it, uh, flow through you, you know, and stay passionate about it. Find other people that are just as passionate as you are, uh, and just have the drive to do it. Um, and, in in, in this world, in today's uh, day and age with technology, literally anything is possible. You can get that music out there um, and and have it influence other people that uh, love this music as well. Yeah, man. Well put. Well put. I'm real glad you guys are back at it. Real glad you gave us a call. Uh, hope to talk to you again, man. Thanks for calling in. No problem, man. I look forward to talking to you again in the near future. Great, dude. I'll shoot you a text in a little bit, all right? Sounds good. Have a good one, man. You too. All right, guys, big thanks to Jason for coming on, and we're going to get to him and their punk core release. Another track coming off our rebellion has just begun. Here's the havoc with selective services. 